It is good for me that I have been afflicted, mm -hmm. yes. that I might learn thy statue. Yes. Mm -hmm. For this short time, I'd like to speak from the topic, spanking from the Lord. Okay. Yes. Spanking Hold from on. the Lord. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I like this particular uh, 119 number of psalm. It is the longest uh, book in, in this psalm, 176 verses. Uh, and within this particular psalm, you have 22 sections. And each section starts with some Hebrew um, consonant. Yeah. In other words, what I'm saying is, right. if you have your Bibles and you, and you have a King James, you might see some funny little squiggly letters. Um, each covering eight, you got eight verses and eight verses and ver eight verses and mm -hmm. all, all the way through. Well, when we get to this section here, uh, this section covers verses 65 through 72. Mm -hmm. But I just want to focus on verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And Pastor Nesson, what I like about this, in this particular psalm, the 100 number 19th number psalm, we see seven words in this psalm that essentially talks about God's word. We see the word law, we see the word testimony, we see the word precepts, commandments, righteous judgments, statutes, and thy word. And all of them have some overlapping meaning, but you can quickly see that this 119 number of Psalm is about God's word. It is about scripture. Not only is it about scripture, it is about suffering. Pastor yeah. It's about suffering. Yes, sir. It's about suffering. And we're going to see some things. And so the first thing I believe that we see in here is for us to really understand and reflect on this topic Thanking from the Lord, uh, right. we must employ a biblical perspective. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. In other words, there is a divine principle or divine principles in this passage of scripture. Yeah. Now, notice what the psalmist says in verse 71. Your Bible, your English translation says, It is good. Well, in original Hebrew, it just starts with good. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just starts with good. Yeah. And it is the Lord Himself in Genesis chapter 1. Sister Powell, seven times um, that he said something was good. All right. When he That's when right. he separated That's the day right. from the night, he said, yeah. it is good. Yeah. When he made the words, it is good. Walk seven times. Right. And when he got to the sixth day, after he created mankind, yeah. he said, it is very good. Yeah. And so all I'm saying is, it is God himself who calls a spade a spade. Yeah. So yeah. the psalmist says, good. He said, it is good for me. And so we must have this biblical perspective. Why this is important is look around, watch the news. You know, uh, you, you know, every week in church you hear the list of people who are in the hospital or people who went home to be with the Lord. You know, but the psalmist says, despite all that, it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how could it be good? Uh -huh. But but it could be good when you take your perspective off what you see mm -hmm. and place it on the true living God. Oh, okay. Don't your Bible read that we walk by faith and not by sight? Yeah. That's right, so that's right. we see it is good for me that I have been afflicted. We must have a biblical perspective. Yeah. Secondly, what I believe was here in this text is we must we must engage the biblical text. Uh -huh. right. What do you mean engage the biblical text? Well, there's some tension uh, in this text. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Frank A. 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 Thompson says that, that when you look at a particular passage uh, of scripture, uh, you should look for the tension in the text. Now here's the tension. Now the psalmist has the audacity to say that it is good for me that I have been afflicted. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many times have you said that? Uh -huh. And so as we engage this text, as we look at this word afflicted, this word means to bow down or to be afflicted. But what's interesting in this passage of scripture, of scripture is who was doing the affliction. Uh -huh. See, what we learn as we engage this text, we see that the action in this passage of scripture is what we call a passive action. Yeah. So what a passive action is, is that the subject is being acted upon. In other words, simply stated is that the subject is the psalmist 
and someone from the outside is doing the action yeah. upon the subject, which yeah. is the psalmist. Are y'all uh -huh. with me? Uh -huh. So what I'm saying is, too often, child of God, we want to blame Satan for everything. Uh -huh. We have church in the microphone system not uh -huh. working. Uh -huh. We want to say Satan in the microphone. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to blame Satan for all things, but yeah. there are some things outside that the true and living God. Yeah. And if we want to be biblical, it's all things. Our Lord is sovereign. Come here, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Look at all the calamity that happened to Joe. God challenged Satan. Yeah. He said, Satan, where you been? Going to and forth, he walked. Uh -huh. He said, have you considered my servant Joe? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as we engage the biblical text, we see that this affliction, this affliction uh, that came about to the psalmist. Now watch it. It's in your Bible. Verse 67. Why did this, did this affliction come? Yeah. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Lord. He said, you missed the mark. He sinned. But yeah. now I have kept that word. Verse 68, thou art good and doest good, teach me thy statutes. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the psalmist is saying that this affliction is good because he learned obedience yeah. to this affliction. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you remember reading in Hebrews chapter 12 that God chastened the ones that he loved, he yeah. disciplined, yeah. 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 and that discipline yeah. is never for destruction, but it's, it's to get us back on the right track. Yeah, man. And so we see we engage the biblical text, engage the biblical text. And thirdly, I believe what's here is after we employ a biblical perspective, in other words, we got to pick out the principle, the biblical yeah. principle. It, yeah. it's, too much, it's, it's too much nonsense out there. Yeah. Uh, barbershop talk about the Lord. Yeah. Uh, flea market shop talk yeah. about the what's Lord. What's that now? Yeah. But nobody want to be biblical and, and speak about the Lord. But then once we once we get to the point, we have to engage this, this text and then finally, we have to expound or expounding on the word if it results in biblical preaching. And all yeah, I'm saying yeah, is, yeah. it's a divine purpose for what the Lord has for both you and I. Yeah. Right. It, yeah, and, yeah. and this divine purpose should lead to divine praise. In yeah. other words, what the psalmist says in verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. Your Bible has a semicolon, and the word that is next, that I. So when you look at that word that, yeah. that that, that word has a, a, a sense of a purpose or a tent. Yeah. It's nothing that the, the Lord does not do anything haphazardly. Yeah. We don't believe in love. Mm -hmm. uh, our Lord is right. sovereign, as I said earlier. Right. And so what we see, and so when he talks about in this last part of this verse that I might learn that statutes, what we see is uh, when you talk about the word learn, the learn is, is a, it's a, it's an Old Testament word that's, and, and there's many words that's used in the Old Testament, but it talks about teaching. Yeah. It talks about instructions. Yeah. Uh, and what's interesting here is, it, as it talks about teaching and instructions, it, it's never talked about as if the, the Lord needs to learn something. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right, that's it, it's, right. But it's talked about mankind who, that need to learn something. Yeah. It's all I'm saying, child of God. There's some things that we ought to learn, and there's some things that we have to unlearn. Nah, and so the Lord, Lord. uses affliction. Yeah. He uses your trials. He oh, uses yeah. COVID-19. Yeah, he man. uses the stock market crash. Uh -huh. he, he uses putting the number 45 in office, ain't even uh -huh. number 46. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He uses who he wants to use because at the end of the day, he is going to get the glory. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. what we have to remember when we talk about a spanking from the Lord, that we must have a biblical perspective. Can you say that? Biblical, biblical perspective. perspective. And yeah. we must engage the biblical text. And then we must expound uh, on the word of God. And when we expound on the word of God, there are some things that we don't. Mm. Well. When we expound on the word of God, past the table, that's some things that we should not waver on. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to wave on, but he was wounded. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. For our transgression. Yeah, yeah. Wounds for our and that. Don't wave on God. I'm not going to wave on that he came down 40 and done uh, two generations. Don't wave on God. I'm not going to wave on that on one Friday. Oh, yeah. Don't wave on God. He died. Yes, he yes, did. Yeah. Did he die? Yes, he did. And then on that Sunday. Oh, yeah. yeah. He rose from the dead. Yes, yeah, sure. man. Thank you. Spank it from the Lord. Spank from the Lord. Let the church say amen. 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 <laughs>